And now we come to the moment that you have all undoubtedly been waiting for. In January 2013, Suzanne Moore fired a column off to the left-wing New Statesman magazine about the power of female anger. The column addressed many of the injustices against women that Moore could see, from the patronising of female members of Parliament to attitudes towards abortion and her claim that 65% of cutbacks in the public sector affected women. Unfortunately for Moore, amid this blizzard of points, she included the claim about women themselves that... We are angry with ourselves for not being happier, not being loved properly, and not having the ideal body shape, that of a Brazilian transsexual. If an article could have a puff of smoke over it, then Moore's was it. In the real world, and the virtual one, it was clear that Moore had made a serious error. Among the more printable accusations against her was that she was a transphobe. Moore did not help matters by responding that, among other things, she did not care for the word. People who were used to beating women down with the accusation were even more furious that their weapon had not worked. Nevertheless, so vociferous and furious was the backlash that within hours Moore was having to clarify her views and assure readers that she was not the hate-filled figure she was now being called. A day earlier... She had been a progressive left-wing feminist. Now she was a reactionary, hate-filled right-wing bigot. After being hounded by trans people and others accusing her of the most base bigotry, Moore announced that to avoid the bullies and trolls, she was leaving social media. One of the people who took all this least well was Julie Birchall. The enfant terrible of 1980s journalism, Birchill had developed her reputation not just as a literary stylist, but as a literary pugilist. In her own description, the sight of her friend Suzanne Moore being bullied, at risk of losing her job and livelihood for one passing trans reference, was too much for her. In Birchill's reckoning, Moore was not just a friend, but one of the very few other women like her from a working-class background who had made it in journalism. Birchill was not going to allow her homie to go down without someone fighting more nastily for her at her side. And so, in that Sunday's Observer, Birchill decided to hide Moore's puff of smoke by producing a mushroom cloud. Among much else, Birchill attacked Moore's critics for attacking a woman. As Birchill put it, women like her and Moore had had to go through their whole lives as women. They had suffered through period pains, batting off sexual advances from male strangers, gone through childbirth, had stared the menopause in the face, and now had the delights of hormone replacement therapy. Women like Moore and her were damned if they were now going to be lectured at or called names by dicks in chicks clothing and a bunch of bedwetters in bad wigs the response was instantaneous The British Home Office Minister in charge of equalities, Lynn Featherstone, immediately declared that Birchill's rant against the transgender community was not merely disgusting and a bigoted vomit, but something for which the observer should sack her. The minister also called for the editor of the paper to lose his job. Duly cowed, the observer issued an apology for the column and swiftly unpublished it from its website. In the apology issued by the paper's editor explaining why the paper had chosen to withdraw the piece from publication, John Mulholland wrote, We got it wrong, and in light of the hurt and offence caused, I apologise and have made the decision to withdraw the piece. Something which is very nearly unheard of in British journalism. Five years later, Birchill herself blamed this episode as one of the reasons why her own career in journalism had ended up, as she put it, up the creek. Meanwhile, though the woman who had called for her sacking, Lynn Featherstone, soon lost her seat in Parliament, she was immediately given a lifetime sinecure in the House of Lords. (laughs) 
Uh... And on that bombshell, <laughs> it's time for me to say... <laughs>